Okay, so I thought I'd make a little video here that explains the basic ideas behind something called Little's Law. Little's Law was just a, um, a, a relationship proven by a guy named John Little in the early 1960s. And basically what it does, it just relates three really metrics that come out of any process. Um, your, your throughput, cycle time, and the whip of a process can all be related in this simple formula. Throughput equals whip divided by cycle time. So if we kind of sort of review what each of these terms mean, you can think of, so throughput is, is actually just the rate that things come out of a process. So it could be a thousand parts a day, it could be, you know, five parts a minute, wherever you're defining this, but it's going to be, it's going to be measured in things Per time period and then your cycle time is just how long it takes to go from the start of the process to the end of the process that's what the cycle time is and that's just going to be pretty straightforward and just measured in time units whatever your time is seconds days hours and then the whip is just these little purple circles that I've drawn in here. So the whip is just, it's actually um, just the things, they're just gonna be things. They could be toasters, they could be cars, whatever, but they're the things that are being processed. So I, you know, I've, so those purple circles right now, that's how many, um, that's how many items are in your whip right now. Just, just the way I've drawn this little example pipeline here. So if you wanted to take an example and just sort of see how these things relate, um, let's say I'm interested in knowing, I want to know what this, if this is a plant, I want to know what sort of the, the average whip level is inside this plant. But the problem is it's kind of hard to walk around the plant and count everything. Count how many things are in process, how many toasters are in, in process of being made, or how many cars are being assembled. But I can sort of sit at the end of this process and just kind of look at it, what's coming out. It's supposed to be a person. And I can, I can just observe the rate that things are coming out pretty easily. And I, I can look at that. Let's just say I come up with the idea that the, um, the whip or the throughput is equal to 100 parts per hour, just through observation. And then as each part comes out, it has a timestamp of when it started and when it ended. And so I can sort of subtract those two and I can so I, I know what the cycle time is for each of the parts. And so if I average that over thousands and thousands of parts, I can figure out that what the cycle time is on average for a part coming out of this plant. So let's say I do that and let's just say the cycle time is equal to two hours. So now I have two out of these three metrics, and that's really what Little's Law lets you do. If I know two, I can calculate the other, the, the, the third one, and a lot of times the third one is hard to calculate. So in this case, um, I know the throughput is 200, I'm sorry, is 100 parts per hour, and that's equal to the whip divided by the cycle time, which in this case is two hours. And you just have to make sure that your, your time units are always lining up, hours, hours in this case. And so when I do that math, I think it's pretty easy to see that the whip is going to turn out to be 200 parts. Is my average whip inside this plant. So, what, so what's cool about that is I was able to figure out what the whip was inside this plant without ever having to go into the plant and count anything or see anything, really. I never even had to step inside the plant. I just was outside. I made these observations of, of throughput and cycle time, and I was able to calculate this whip value, which is sort of what I was interested in in the first place. So that's the cool thing about Little's Law. Just with a few basic, if I, if I can get data on two out of these three things, I can calculate the third. So it's kind of a kind of a handy little um, equation to to know about.
Um, so now another thing is that that's kind of interesting to do is to apply this to something besides a factory. So how about, for example, if you wanted to look at this for a restaurant. So let's say there's this restaurant. And what I'm really interested in, I want to know what is, what is kind of the revenue of this restaurant? How much money do they make? Well, I can't really get that easily. But I go to this restaurant a lot. And I know that it has 40 tables on average. And these 40 tables are about 75% full. So I kind of know that sort of on average, these I have 30 tables, sort of effectively 30 tables being used in this restaurant. And let's just say each table has uh, another assumption, may, has uh, two people per table. And so what that gives me is that tells me that this restaurant on average has 60 people in it. And if you think about it, a restaurant is just processing people. So really what that is, is that is the whip of the restaurant, right? That's its work in process, if you will. It's just, it's just measured in terms of people. So, so, it, so sort of on average at any one time, this restaurant has 60 people in it. Now, and I also, now cycle time is just how long a person stays in this process. Well, the process is just basically eating your dinner or eating your lunch, whatever it is. And we can just make an assumption that that's like, say, 1.5 hours. That's how long two people stay at a table in this restaurant. So the time they order, get their food, eat it, talk, leave, it's like 1.5 hours. So now, again, I have two out of the three components of Little's Law. And now what this lets me do is I can calculate the throughput. So again, the throughput is equal to the whip divided by the cycle time. Because I think knowing the throughput is going to allow me to calculate this revenue. And in this case, our throughput is equal to 60 people divided by cycle time of uh, one and a half hours. I'm just going to write it in terms of um, three halves to make the math easier because then that way I think you can see that the throughput comes out to be 40 people per hour. And let's say I kind of know, so I, I kind of know these three components now. And, I, and, and now let's just say this restaurant, let's say it's open from, it's open every day from 12 to 10, 12 p.m. to 10 noon till 10 p.m. So it's open 10 hours a day. So now if I kind of say, okay, this restaurant um, processes 40 people an hour. And it's open for 10 hours a day. And let's say that if I want to kind of relate this to revenue, I kind of have to know well, how much money does each person spend. Let's just say I look at the menu and I say, oh, they probably spend about $20 a person. Now, what this tells me then, if I sort of do that math, this tells me that this restaurant has a revenue of about $8,000 um, per day. And so that's what's cool about Little's Law. I kind of didn't really, all I did was make a few sort of quick and dirty assumptions about WIP and about the cycle time that let me calculate the throughput. I use that throughput based and, and just the kind of knowing the hours of the restaurant, it lets me come up with this sort of financial number here. I know their revenue is 8,000 per day. And I could times that by the number of days they're open per year and come up with their annual revenue. So again, that's just, that's the beauty of Little's Lies. Quick and dirty way. If I know, if I, if I can make some, uh, you know, rough assumptions on two out of the three variables between uh, throughput, whip, and cycle time, I can calculate the third and uh, sort of draw some uh, sort of fast conclusions. So 
Little's Law, it's a, it's, it's a good tool and it's a good, good item to have uh, at your disposal.